I discovered this app about two years ago, and in that time, I have never gone out and used this app and not caught fish, Ow. ever. Ahoy mateys, my name is Cullen. Last week when I was on board my friend's marinette, I crossed paths with John McAlpin. I had no idea what I was in for. After about five minutes sitting down with him, I knew I needed to make this video because John is an expert on everything boat electronics. From navigation to sonar, he knows it all. And so I grabbed my camera, we sat down and just started talking. First off, about a little app called Navionics. So for $20 a year, this has changed the way I boat, no lie. This is not sponsored in any way and John has no official connection to the company, although he did give me this cool hat, <laughs> right? So anyway, let's get into it. So, hey, John, I'm Cullen. Hi, I'm John McAlpin. Awesome. And uh, glad to meet you finally. For, for real, I've been checking out your YouTube channel and you've got a lot of interesting info, like you said, stuff that people have access to, they just don't realize it. Exactly. With Navionics, it's a, it's a Garmin product. Uh, Navionics was purchased by Garmin a number of years ago and they have improved that app to the point now where they have one foot contours for most of the major lakes around the country, certainly here on Lake Lanier. If you're trying to figure out how to get from one point to another, you can use this and it will auto route you from one place to another based on parameters that wow. you give it. I mean, let's take a look at where we are right now. This is, this is the Aqualand Marina Peninsula. Also tells you how deep the water is underneath the boat right now and shows other docks in the area. And the contour lines on the shoreline, those seem really finely accurate. They are, they are down, they are accurate to within one foot. Wow. So, and they are adjustable based on lake level. So in the case of Lake Lanier, it's an impoundment uh, with a dam. So they let water in and out at various times. If the lake levels come up, as I change the water level, all the contour lines get redrawn automatically. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select route and I'm gonna select automatic. And then I touch the chart where I want to begin. And I'm just gonna start my, my route at the end of my dock. And let's say I want to go to this island. I'm gonna put a spot there. All right. And as you can see, in just a few seconds, it's already plotted a route wow. that will get me from where I am now to where I'm trying to go. And that takes into effect the, the shape of the hole, the, the draft that you That's you've correct. Input. So you can go into the settings in this app and you can tell it what the draft of your boat is. It will actually uh, track me along that course and it will adjust based on the GPS location of this device. Uh, it will adjust as we go and tell me which direction to go. And the, one of the really interesting features about this is that Navionics actually updates their charts daily. So they get feedback from people who record their sonar tracks and send them into Navionics. They'll post those updates on the charts and push those to people who have the app. As other anglers record their tracks and send them into Navionics, they will adjust the charts so that you know where the sandbars, where the oyster beds, and things like it's, that, so you so don't it's run aground. Crowdsourcing the charts in a way, it's using that Absolutely. data to share with everyone else. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's and really it's a cool. tremendous feature for keeping it current. Pun intended. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, as good as the app is at charting a plot, it's even better at finding fish. John has been fishing for his entire life. He's incredibly good at it, and this app is one of the secret weapons that he keeps with him at all times. I use this a lot for fishing. I do a lot of fishing for a species called crappie. I'll check a local fishing report and find out where the, the crappie are typically holding. So one of the things that I can do with my chart is I can go in and I can highlight areas that are in those specific depth zones, and that makes it easy for me to determine whether or not I'm close to an area that might be holding that species of fish. Interesting. So what I would do for that is I would just press menu and map options and then scroll down to fishing ranges. Now I've already set a couple of fishing ranges up here. One is called crappy. It says 25 to 32 feet. And then I have another range here that's set at 40 to 60 feet, and that's to indicate where the channels, the deeper channels are in the, in the lake. If I turn those on, and if you watch carefully on the chart as I turn these on, so you can see now a lot of areas that are highlighted in red, those are areas that might be holding crappie. Interesting. And if I turn on the other range, that tells me where the deeper channels are, which is also advantageous. If you can find areas where you have 
uh, a covered area because crappie like to hide underneath docks. If you can find docks that are in that target area that are close to this deep water that gives them an escape route, that's a perfect place to fish for crappie. So it seems like this kind of technology really meshes well with the, the knowledge and the understanding you already have. It's, it's not just an entirely new skill to learn. It really meshes well with That's that correct. So rather than searching, in this case, uh, 38,000 acres of lake for fish, uh, this cuts it down to just a very, very small fraction of that is that have to be searched. Is this allowed in like competitions? Is this uh, actually, it, it is not cheating. Wow. It's not cheating. It's, it's absolutely usable. And in fact, uh, there's a, another friend of mine who recently fished a tournament over in Lake Hartwell. Uh, we went through and we selected eight locations. He went to those eight locations and found fish at all eight oh, wow. locations. Now, for an angler to be able to hit eight out of eight uh, for, for fishing locations, that is tremendous. So, the, I mean, just to show you how easy it is to set something up like this, another species that I might be fishing for on this lake might be striped bass. Okay. And if I were looking right now, if you looked at current fishing report, they'll tell you that the striped bass are holding over about a 60 foot bottom. So what I can do is again, I'll select menu, map options, scroll down to fishing ranges, and I'm gonna add a range that doesn't currently exist. And I'm gonna call it striper. And I know from experience that when I try to save this, it's gonna to try to rename that. Autocorrect is gonna change that to stripper. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Since I'm gonna assume that the fish don't have a, an accurate depth finder, I'm gonna give it a little bit of margin and say anywhere from 58 to 62 feet. So I'll put in 62 feet as a maximum, and I'll put in 58 feet as a minimum. And now, if I look around some of these areas, if I were looking for where the stripers are holding, I can go directly to where you see these green areas and I can troll along those areas with my boat and, and that's the have, most likely place to find striped bass. And you can have multiple going at the same time. So Absolutely. So if you want to pick up both species, you can Absolutely. go to a place that has the best spot for both. Correct. So, I can, so I, can have, I can have the, the deep channels where the stripers are running and I can also turn on the other areas. And depending on where I am, I might decide to fish for a different species because it just happens to be convenient. So Navionics will run on Android phones and iPhones, and I think even computers are actual like radar sonar chart unit things. But for John, there's only one device that's the best, and here's why. All smartphones have a GPS chip in them. All tablets don't. Uh... So if you have a tablet that is capable of a cellular plan, you don't have to have the cellular plan, but if it's capable of running a cellular plan, it too will have a GPS chip in it so that it can actually track you as you're moving. So your charts will actually adjust based on your current location. That's smart. I like oh, it's that. huge. A tremendous feature. Tremendous feature. For real. An iPad or some kind of mobile device also has the advantage of you can move it anywhere on the boat. If you have an upper and lower helm, you can have different mounts and move it where you, where you need it. And if you look at the cost of purchasing an iPad, a 12-inch iPad, as opposed to a 12-inch sonar device, sonar and chart plotter device, a, a third the cost. When you start looking at it from a financial perspective, it's a much cheaper option. So at this point, my brain was full of brand new knowledge and I thought there was nothing else I could learn right then. But boy, was I wrong, because even as I was packing away my camera, John was pulling out his laptop. He had one more thing he wanted to show me. An entirely different field, just as exciting. Now we're going to talk about sonar, seeing underneath the water. It's mind blowing. Just check it out. So if you watch carefully, you'll see this is my lure coming down into the water and a crappy coming up to check it out and then coming up to my boat. What, what is this from? <laughs> what kind of device is this? Is, this is using Garmin LiveScope. This is a type of uh, real-time sonar that can show you not just where the fish were when you passed over them, but where they are right now. So not only can I tell that there are fish sitting on a brush pile on the bottom of this lake, I can actually watch to see how they react to my lure. That's insane. <laughs> so show me that again. There was a glitch. Sure, sure. And you're going to see a fish come up, grab the lure, and then head up toward my boat because I hooked him. <laughs> Whether he wants to or not. Whether he wants to or not. Goodbye. <laughs> Got him. That is an insane <laughs> amount of detail. This is all recorded on my iPad. I can basically mirror my sonar to my iPad. Cool. 
and then screen record the iPad so that I have this is exactly what you would see on the sonar display. Wow. Uh, now another another video that I'll show you one where I was fishing at a particular location and I was not catching a lot of fish and I was trying to figure out why am I not getting bit here because there are a lot of fish in this area and I'm, it just made no sense to me that I wasn't getting a bite. What I found was that the fish were preoccupied with something else. So let me show you what that was. I'm curious, what were they after? Or what was after them? So what you're gonna see here is these are crappie swimming around the brush pile. And here you see a striped bass coming in. You'll see it, did you see his head snap up there? He was feeding. Wow. So the fish aren't reacting to my lure because they're worried more about Mr. Striper than they are. They're worried about being eaten <laughs> rather than being caught. This is like a, a whole new dimension. Oh, this is a game changer. For an angler, this is a game changer because one of the one of the main things you're trying to figure out is are the fish reacting positively to my presentation? Am I putting something in front of them that they're interested in? I can watch on my sonar and tell immediately if they're not reacting to what I'm throwing at them, I'll change it right then and make an adjustment to start catching fish. Now this will be one where uh, I actually found a sunk boat uh, in part of the what? lake. Yeah, it appears to be a pontoon boat that was sunk on the north end of Lake Lanier. It looks like a pontoon boat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so as it's going in and out, so this is obviously a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional space. That's exactly right. So is the array like a, a scanner or a, a printer in a way where it does one line at a time? It, it's interesting that you'd refer to it as an array because this type of sonar is actually called phased array sonar. Uh, and so what it's doing, it is, it is creating uh, a two-dimensional picture of a three-dimensional space, as you said, um, but it's doing it at such a fast rate that you really don't see the refresh quite so much. In this particular case, these types of phased array sonars, you want to mount them in such a way that you can turn that transducer and point it at the specific area that you're interested in. That way you build up a three-dimensional Wow. Understand your three-dimensional understanding yeah, of the structure under the water. If it's not already being done, I imagine someplace, sometime, there's going to be spinning arrays that do that, and they mm -hmm. build up a, a three-dimensional space that you can explore with, like, voxel-type um, representation instead of these pixels. Uh, Lowrance actually has uh, what they call 3D sonar, and it actually creates a three-dimensional model that you can use your fingers on a, a touch screen and spin that water column wow. around to look at it from different directions in real time. At what point does the Navy call and say we want our sonar technology back? <laughs> uh, well, uh, this is technology that the Navy does use. An acquaintance of mine who is a retired Navy SEAL, who when he saw what I was doing with scanning sonar, uh, just laughed and said, I'm used to using that looking up not looking down. Wow. So it was, a, it was an interesting feedback from him regarding that type of technology. That's so cool. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. Sorry if it got a little bit technical there at the end. My mind was just buzzing with all sorts of opportunities and ideas. Like that kind of technology is something I've never explored before. This is my first boat ever and all the electronics are 40 years old. So that kind of new technology is bringing in a whole new dimension to something that I thought I knew intimately but I had no idea. So if you enjoyed any of this, you need to check out John's stuff at sonarangler.com. Yeah, right, sonarangler.com, and we also have YouTube videos as well under just Sonar Angler, all one word. Perfect. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this kind of video, I make them and put them out every single Saturday at noon. Next week is gonna be pretty exciting because we're back on my old Chris Craft Corinthian. Yeah, it's been a while, but there's exciting stuff going on and you do not wanna miss it. That's pretty much a guarantee, so. See you all next time.